Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I thought I would share with you today my planner for 2023. I'm a little bit against the flow type person. I, I don't typically get a um, Hobonichi Weeks or things like that. I, I need a little bit more space and I don't need a lot of extra pages. So this is the kind of thing I'm opting for. This is kind of in between the standard wide slash Kaye um, and a five size. It's an eight by 5.7. So it fits in my um, covers that are like that, although I'm not sure that I will use a cover with this or not. This is the, I think it was called Marigold, the color. So the prices range from $9.95 to $12.95, depending on the color. I think this might have been, oh, this was $11.95. I don't know. Maybe it's a popular color, but I really liked, liked it. So I went ahead and bought it. So paperage, I guess is how you say that. I like this setup, though, <clears throat> because it has the monthlies at the beginning, and then it has all the weeklies. In my last setup, I tried putting the monthly um, spread right before that month, and then it ended up to be too much flipping around. So I was glad to come across this setup again. Um, by the way, this is a faux leather cover, and it is a hard cover, as you can see. And it does have holidays added to it, which I appreciate. And it has the pocket in the back with some sticker labels. But that is kind of irrelevant, really, for me. I don't typically use that. <clears throat> it's got this, of course, the uh, couple of years ahead. <coughs> and there goes my voice. <clears throat> because I'm doing a video. It has this, where I guess you could just kind of glance at your year and see what's going on. I don't often use that either. I get kind of lazy with planners. If it's got a lot of extra places to, you know, track this or that or plan, I find I don't really use it long term. I just kind of prefer the um, basic stuff. So, for example... Here is the spread for January. I filled in birthdays, uh, appointments, things that I know about ahead of time, primarily birthdays and anniversaries. And then, of course, then when you get to that week, you have your just month broken down into a week. And this setup, I think, is going to be good too because... What I'm hoping to stick with is, say on Monday, I'm going to the dentist. So I'll just write dentist appointment. So the stuff that's here is the have to stuff of the week. And then I'm planning on using this side as a ongoing list of the week. What typically happens is I might say, um, write a letter to so-and-so, and then I don't get to it. So I scratch it out <clears throat> and then I maybe move it to the next day. Or I even write it in a couple locations in case I don't get it that day or the next day or the next day. What I want to do in the coming year is have my weekly to-do list where I can scratch it off as I do it, but it doesn't have to happen on a specific day, Monday through Sunday. And then I can just glance at it and see, okay, today I have lots of time. I'll get these certain tasks done. And so that that format has worked well for me in the past, but I have used a more narrow weeks size um, setup. And just because I write big and I tend to get sloppy in my planners, I think this little bit larger size will work. It's like I said, similar to an A5 size. <clears throat> so that that is my plan. In the back, I have a place where I'm doing my ink swatching to see how <clears throat> Sorry, how this ink works with this paper. In the um, write-up or the review, it said that it was fountain pen friendly. And I would agree with that. It does seem to maybe not be as crisp of a look. There might be just the slightest bit of kind of a little bit of a feathering. But it's very smooth. It was very pleasant to do all this um, sampling on here. 
There is a little bit of bleed through though, as you can see. So not always, but it does tend to be where I did my little leaf drawing or whatever to, you know, kind of swatch the ink. Where the ink is more saturated, <clears throat> it has bled through some. So I will keep that in mind as I'm writing in my planner. And I may just use a regular ink pen. I know that's horrible to say, <clears throat> but sometimes that happens. Anyway, um, or I'll just use a fountain pen. I am excited about this though. I feel ready for the year. Sometimes I wait till like December or um, Christmas time to set up my new planner. Now I have it done. And I did add these little tabs. <clears throat> I should go back and talk about that in a minute. I tried to pick colors from um, the tabs that my friend Stacy sent me that sort of worked with this marigold color. More of the earthy tones, but there's a few brighter ones in there. Maybe like June and September. And then I did do a Christmassy look for December for the holiday. But that that really helps me to have the tabs. If you do an idea like this, don't do what I did. And remember to keep room for your elastic. <clears throat> so as you can see, it has to bend to get in there. I, I could snip these down a little bit. I may do that yet. But what typically happens is this planner, whatever planner I have, sits open to the week that I'm on in the kitchen on the counter where I keep track of everything that's going on in our home. It will very rarely be closed and shut. It's usually like this. So the fact that the elastic kind of is bumping up against my tabs may not even be an issue. So that's all for now. Hope that's interesting to you. Got this on Amazon. And again, it's the paperage ranging from $9.95 to $12.95. And I really think it's going to be a very handy, usable book for the year. That's all. Thanks for watching. See you soon.